Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the press, fellow Kenyans. This afternoon, I have a short briefing as we seek to update Kenyans on the current status of coronavirus pandemic in the country. First and foremost, on behalf of the government, the Ministry of Health, and myself personally, I would like to send condolences to the family and friends of the late Captain Daudi Kimuyu Kibati of Kenya Airways, who is being buried this afternoon in his rural home in Kitui. As you know by now, Captain Kibati was a pilot who flew the last Kenya Airways flight from New York to Nairobi on Wednesday, the 26th of March, before the government's ban on international flights took effect as one of the key measures aimed at containing the spread of the disease. Captain Kibati, together with his colleagues in Kenya Airways flight, took a major risk to go and evacuate Kenyans from America, one of the high-risk countries. In fact, it is currently the leading number, has the leading number of coronavirus diseases at 277, over 277,000 reported so far. Captain Kibati managed to evacuate many Kenyans and non-Kenyans from the United States back into our country, but only for him to succumb to the same disease. In other words, he made the ultimate sacrifice. May his soul rest in peace. Kenyans owe him a great deal. On more positive note, on a more positive note, as we informed you yesterday, we are now able and capable to locally manufacture personal protective equipment, PPEs, and therefore to assure all health workers that they are now secure going forward. I would also like to say that our laboratories in Camry are also involved in serious research to find some of the, to represent, to, 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 to replace some of the imports that uh, we are making outside the country of uh, various items required for testing. They are involved in very heavy work as we speak, and we hope soon we can come up with good news about our ability and self-sustainability in our testing operations. I also wish to inform you that the ministry has operationalized Kenyatta University Teaching Hospital. We have been talking about preparing it, but now I can confirm we have operationalized it and we have already over 20 patients or 20 people who we have isolated um, for the coronavirus disease in uh, Kenyatta University Teaching Hospital. We have also started moving persons who have been in designated facilities depending on their status to, pre to prevent them from infections. To avoid congestion in our healthcare facilities, the Ministry has also made arrangements for home-based care where we believe and our healthcare um, system believes that that is possible. We are also urging, and we, have, and we said this the other day, that any person visiting a supermarket or any other open-air market to begin wearing protective masks immediately so that we can begin to prevent transmissions in those areas. At this juncture, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Kenyans, I wish to make a special appeal today. I wish to make a special appeal and address a special group of people who are the youth of our nation. The youth are the biggest component of our society. The youth are also 
the people who are largely mobile. The youth are also the people who have got the energy. And I wish to appeal for the unleashing of this energy in fighting the disease. First and foremost, if you look at the statistics, global statistics, it shows two glaring, two very glaring statistics. One is that uh, the youth are the ones who are contacting the disease. But two, the youth are safer than the older people and therefore the carriers who then take it to the older people who get it and then the older people die in larger and larger numbers. Therefore, I want to appeal to the Kenyan youth as follows. First, I wish to appeal to them to become part of the solution to the problem that we are experiencing by taking certain measures. As I said, we do not wish to have people traveling up country. If you travel up country without knowing whether you are positive or negative, it means, therefore, there is a possibility that you are traveling up country to go and kill your parents or to go and kill your grandparents. The youth in this country have always been able to organize themselves. They have organized themselves in matatus, in matato structures. Indeed, they saved the matato industry by organizing themselves into groups, into circles, and so on. The youth have, are the ones who brought some element of sanity in border borders by organizing themselves again into groups with chairmen and committees. They use the border border structure to create welfare uh, for young families. The youth have organized themselves in tuk-tuks, organizations, and managed to run down very well. The youth are the ones who organize themselves into football, netball, and other uh, sporting activities in uh, densely populated areas. The youth are the ones who are running markets. Young people are the ones who run markets. They are the ones who sell vegetables and bring them to the, the market ladies. So, in other words, I am saying that if we organize ourselves in a similar format, if the youth take the responsibility of organizing themselves in similar format in the fight against coronavirus, they can reach a new impetus. We can create the difference between the way we are handling our things in Kenya and the way it is being handled elsewhere by ensuring that the youth are the center of our fight against this disease. Now we are not saying it is going to be easy. We are not even saying that there will be no challenges. And nobody claims that uh, it, is going to be, it is not going to be rough going forward. But I would like to imagine that, as the old adage says, when the going gets tough, the tough God get going. And I would like to imagine, and I am, I am positive, that our youth are a tough people. And we can overcome this. But this is not, this is not a journey that the old people can walk alone. This is a journey that requires the energy of youth. It is the responsibility of our youth, therefore, to secure this nation. God, in his wisdom or otherwise, God, in his wisdom, has decided that the youth are the ones, our youth are the ones who have come in to grapple with this new responsibility of a disease unknown to man. There was a generation that fought for independence. There was a generation that has been fighting for economics. But the youth of today have been caught with the responsibility of fighting against this disease. As others have done in the past, I appeal to you to really, really take the responsibility as seriously as the generations that were there with our forefathers. Because if we do not do this, it is also the youth that you suffer the most. It is you 
my sons and daughters. It is you, my younger brothers and sisters, who will face your children with no job and a collapsed economy. It is you who will face us, your parents, as you watch us get sickly and there is nothing you will be able to do. And worse, it is you who will bury us, not in small numbers, but in very large numbers. Is that something that you, that you would like to do? If it is not what you want to do, then the road ahead, the path ahead is clear. We have got to observe and be part of the solution to the problem. The football teams can now convert themselves into clean-up groups that clean up our streets, our mita. The market youth leaders can inspect and working with our security forces ensure that social distancing is being observed in markets, in supermarkets. It is our youth who can be able to patrol with our police and assisting the police to ensure that distances are being kept even as we walk, even as we get into matatus. And it is our youth who can assist even those from universities who are at home. It is those who can join our medical forces and assist as volunteers to take care of those who eventually fall unwell. And so I appeal to them in a very special way to take this responsibility in the seriousness that um, we must. Yani, nataka kusema, mimi nataka kuwasihi vijana na wasiana wetu tujitayarishe kulinda hii nchi yetu kutoka kwa hii viruzi. Kila vizazi ama generation, kila vizazi katika maisha hii yetu, tangu, tangu uhuru wetu, kila vizazi imepatiwa kazi yao na mungu mwenyewe. Na vizazi hii ya leo, imepatiwa jukumu la kupigana na hii virusi, diyo kenya yetu tusije tukaisha. Nyinyi munajua kujipanga, munajipanga katika matatu, munajipanga, na uongozi ambao tumeona katika tuktuk mipango ya tuktuk katika masoko na jukumu ile imepata vijana wakati huu ni kuokoa sisi wazee na kujiokoa nyinyi wenyewe tusipofanya hivyo tusipofanya hivyo wale ambao watakuwa na shida kubwa ni nyinyi vijana ambao ni watoto wangu na ni watoto wetu Ni nyinyi ambao mtaanza kuwa na shida ya kuangalia mtoto akiwa mdogo na hana chakula ama wewe mwenyewe una kazi kwa sababu uchumi wetu uchumi wetu utaenda utaathirika na kufa Ni nyinyi vijana wetu ambao tusipofanya vile tunasema mtaanza kuwa na wazazi kama mimi na wengineo ambao watakuwa wagonjwa Na mzazi wale wazee, mzee hawezi kuchunga mzee. Ni vijana wetu wataanza kutushunga sisi wenyewe. Na tukiendelea hivyo, tusipojihathari basi nyinyi vijana wetu. Vijana na wasiana wetu. Nyinyi jukumu letu, jukumu lenu ndio itakuwa kutuzika sisi wazazi wenu. Na mimi nafikiria Hakuna muyuth ata mmoja anaweza kutaka ama kupenda kuwa na hiyo kazi ngumu sana. Kwa hivyo jameni, kwa hivyo jameni mimi na wasihi, na wasihi sana. Tujipange kwa mitaa vile tunajipanga kazi ingine. Tujipange kuangalia kwamba watu wasikabiliane. Tujipange kwa masoko. Ndio watu wakiambiwa watumie vitambaa mchikane na polisi mfanye kazi pamoja kwa wakati huu mwasaidie msaidie wafanyikazi wa afya ndio nyinyi sasa muwe katikati ya kupigana na hii virusi kwa hivyo leo nilikuwa na hiyo eno moja nilikuwa nataka kuzungumzia youth wetu nilikuwa nataka kuwasihi 
Nilikuwa nataka kuwaomba nyinyi muwe katika vita hii na njia ingine njia mpya ya kupigana na hii kwa sababu mimi nikisikiza na nikitembea katika masoko wale ambao hawashukui hii maneno na ngumu naona kama ni vijana na wasichana chukueni hii kitu na nguvu ndio tuweze kupigana na hii um, epidemic ama hii virusi Ladies and gentlemen over the last 24 hours we have tested over 300 people for coronavirus out of the 372 samples that we have taken four have tested positive for the disease the four are three kenyans and one pakistani national in terms of gender we are three who are male and one who is female two of them traveled from malawi and pakistan respectively while the other two contracted it locally their ages range from 34 years for the youngest and 44 years for the oldest out of the 2050 individuals who have been in mandatory quarantine 1866 have so far been tested and we are remaining with 184 individuals contact tracing remains the largest activity that uh, we have right now and about 1781 contacts have been monitored We have managed to discharge about 1100 people from our follow-up program on the expiry of 14 days. Currently, we are also monitoring some 672 people in our follow-up program. Ladies and gentlemen, we have had cases of people testing positive in our quarantine facilities. Indeed, currently they rank among the highest this is likely to pose a risk of more transmissions especially among those who have been sharing facilities or those who have not taken seriously the distancing requirements as i said earlier there are those who actually went on parting sprees in quarantine facilities this is against every protocol that we have issued but in a bid to further contain any transmission arising from those in mandatory quarantine we have instructed our medical teams to extend quarantine facility quarantining those in facilities which we believe have got individuals who need another 14 days given the fact that the contacts that they have within the quarantine facilities have tested positive now we appreciate that this is going to be very inconveniencing you know to quite a number of people and we apologize in advance but to secure to secure kenyans it is an, a, 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 an activity or a position that we have regrettably had to take what i would like to appeal even to those whose quarantine for, uh, uh, period has been extended and it is not all it is not all those who are quarantined it is only in those areas where our medical personnel feel that it is necessary because of the contacting that has been going on in those facilities and the discovery of positive cases in the same so what i would like to appeal is that those in quarantine facilities please understand the whole concept of quarantining you is so that you can stay away keeping your social distance reducing contacts as much as possible so that whatever status you have remains you as alone the reason why those people are quarantined is because there is we suspect 
that some could be positive because of their travel. Consequently, we urge you, we urge you, those of you who are in quarantine facilities, we urge you that you do exactly that, quarantine yourself. Finally, I also want to talk to the issue of gatherings. Gatherings, for some odd reason, there is a relaxed atmosphere about people who are gathering in groups. And I want to once again stress that there is a government directive in accordance with the Public Health Act that we should not gather anywhere. I, I, we were even hearing rumors about a group of over 6,000 people who wanted to gather somewhere in this town for some odd reason. And I would like to say that such a gathering will not take place. So let's be reasonable. I appeal to Kenyans to adhere to the rules so that enforcement becomes unnecessary. We are thankful to those who continue to obey the guidelines that have been given, the guidelines regarding curfew, the guidelines regarding social distancing, the guidelines regarding hygiene measures of washing your hands. We are grateful that you are doing that, and you like to urge that you continue to do so. And you like those who are not, you like to appeal to you to desist from any defiance of the rules that are made so that we can save Kenyans. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. COVID-19 is concerned, or do we need uh, further measures to this? Okay. Um, uh, first of all, we are lucky, in a sense, purity, that the numbers are not increasing at an increasing rate. At least today's uh, numbers, as you saw, were actually less than. In this week, I think this is the lowest number, in spite of the fact that we have increased um, uh, testing. So, we believe that the measures that we are taking are having effect. The less we, the, the, let's not forget, the whole thing about curfew, or even what you, are, what you are hearing people talking about lockdowns and distancing, the whole idea is to create social distancing or physical distancing as it were. That is the whole idea. Even when you hear of lockdowns, the only thing, the thing, a lockdown is where there is extreme distancing, forced extreme distancing. That's what it is. So a curfew, in effect, is a, a way of ensuring that you reduce uh, those numbers. So we are, we are, we are confident that um, it's having an effect. And you know, the, the, the irony, and what, and what you must keep at the back of your mind is this. When something does not happen, when people do not get, uh, if we save people, from getting, from, be, from becoming positive or turning positive, what we will never know is what would have happened if they did. In other words, when we talk about uh, the effect of a curfew, what you don't know is what may have happened had we not had the curfew. This is the figure that you must always keep at the back of your mind, and it is something that usually people won't think about. Next. Uh my name is Kennedy Muredi from NTV, and uh, thank you very much for... Hi, uh, Kennedy. You will have to wait. Sorry. I am Vera Okeo from the Daily Nation. You've made a passionate appeal for, for youth to be involved. My question goes to the youth in the medical uh, healthcare workers. The Kenyatta is using registrars with master students who have no 
um, experience in handling this at all, the ones who handle the babies and they're using public transport. I would like the ministry to say uh, what they're going to do about that with the young people. And then also the list that you say, the 5,000 people you're going to employ, we have not seen any medical person in that list. So um, how are we going to fight this if doctors are left out and they're not looked after? Uh, as I understand now, okay. First, and I, I think there is, uh, let me correct you. Let me first start by correcting you. That uh, even if, I, I think indeed it was in yesterday's paper, that uh, they advertise the various categories of medical personnel, clerical officers, I mean, not clerical, the um, uh, clinical officers, a nurse grade this, and so, and so on and so forth. That's number one. So it has already started. This has already started. And in fact, what we have said is that the, 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 the county service boards are the ones who are going to appoint those people even at the county levels. And we have the, 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 um, the hiring of uh, the doctors and nurses at the various hospitals has already started. In fact, I think uh, KU has already hired over 100 of them. And it is going on even as we speak. The second thing is this, do not underestimate the ability of our people. Do not uh, um, underestimate the ability of even our third and fourth year students, A, to take care of themselves, to fight for themselves, and to ensure that uh, they are not exposed. You know, because, you know, we, we talk about these things as if, you know, we are talking about some helpless people, you know, who are unable to speak for themselves. They are very able to speak for themselves, and uh, they are the first ones on the line. And I can tell you that we are also involving them in ensuring that um, the protective gear that I spoke about is, is for them. This protective gear we are saying, we do not pass anything until the doctors themselves, you know, have agreed and accepted that uh, this is a good quality uh, gear. So in terms of taking care of them, we are, we can do better. You know, nobody has said that uh, we are doing, uh, we, are, we are operating in ultimate goodness. We can do better, and we are striving to do better. I know that uh, the Ministry of, uh, of uh, Public, uh, the, 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 the Public Service Commission, is working at seeing how we can improve their welfare, even as they continue to be our frontline soldiers. My ministry is looking at how to secure them from any infections. So they are at the top of our minds. The acting director general here is the chair of a team that is working on nothing else except the protection and the welfare of our medical workers. And I want to thank them and continue to thank them. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Kennedy Muraidi from NTV. One of the things that I would like a clarification from you, Bonacias, is the question of those in quarantine and the extension of days. One of the things that I, you have alluded to is that there is a probability that they brought this on themselves by the spree of partying. But then there is the other question that is coming from those who are in quarantine, where they are even saying that there is no social distancing in the way that they are put in on this, uh, in these rooms. Then. There's the question of uh, calling on the youth to take the steps of making sure that we fight this. I am a youth and I'm going to call to heed to this call. But then again, there is the cases that we've even seen in Kisumu, where these youth, some of them are even beating up the Boda Boda people. Some of them might even take your call in the form of forming vigilantes. How are we going to make sure that we arrest this? There's the question of those thank, in the thank medical... You, thank you. Hey, Muredi, you are giving a speech now. Thank you. It's thank just you. questions. Thank you very questions. much. Thank you very much, my friend. Le let me just say this. Uh, first and foremost, our appeal to the youth is not one that calls for vigilante groups. It is one that calls for cooperating and working through our security agencies, working with and through the security agencies, to ensure that they themselves are on the front line of good behavior. That is um, the first one. So, but, so it is no call, and even Kisumu, even Kisumu indeed, there are some people who are misbehaving 
That has nothing to do with our call. And that has nothing to do with anything else. That is basically lawlessness. And that is, what, that is not what uh, we are calling for. As for the quarantining situation, you know, we started off by saying that it's a personal responsibility. There is a personal responsibility to each and every person to ensure, you know, we cannot police distancing. It is, very, it is very difficult for a person to be followed, each person to be followed all the time, to see what distance that they are keeping from the other one. It's a personal responsibility. And therefore, you can only take responsibility for yourself. And I would like to appeal here, please, don't wait until you get positive, and then you start blaming government because you have turned positive. While we have been singing, appealing, begging that people keep social distancing. Last one. TV. Uh, my question is, with the KU facility now being turned into a sort of isolation and treatment center for corona, what happens to the other uh, pre-existing, the patients that were uh, being held there and uh, have pre-existing conditions. And lastly, what is the status of the distribution of the masks to border border operators and even the PSV uh, operators? Okay, two, two, there are two questions. Thank you, Shemtai. What I said was, uh, number one, is that we have operationalized KU. KU is a huge facility. Those who are there and those who have been uh, hospitalized there before are not affected by this at all. So they are continue. There. What we are not going to do is that we are not going to, to ad admit new cases of regular, of a regular nature in, uh, in KU. And uh, on the issue of distribution, there are many sources of the masks. What I said was the ones we have, we are going to distribute to the, um, uh, through the county governments, through the CECs, the responsible for health, which then they will pass them on to the chairman of the various organizations, the Matatos, the, the Border Borders, and so on. But we are not saying that people should be sitting around waiting, you know, for masks to come to them. Wananchis now have been given freedom, you know, to make them. And we have said these things should be made as cheaply as possible. As you have seen, people are even producing their own for a shilling, and so on and so forth, provided they are following the laid guidelines. So going forward, Going forward, we'll expect, for example, that when the supermarkets are uh, giving masks as people enter, or and, this, and, this, and the experience we have seen over the last couple of days is that people are not even waiting to be given these masks. They are acquiring them for themselves because it is your own safety. It is not the government's safety. It is your own safety. So we will distribute as many as we can. We are continuing to do so. Fortunately for us, we don't have to import them anymore. We are making them locally now. You know, just as I said, uh, just one institution in Kitui is manufacturing 25,000 of them per day. So we are not worried about uh, getting, uh, and also it's business for a lot of young people, a lot of young tailors who can now be able to manufacture them. You saw some very fashionable ones being made, and we are for fashion, but I hope they also work. Thank you very much. This is the last one. Okay, my name is Gloria Milimu from K24 TV. Yes, my Gloria. question is, who will cater for the extended quarantine, the cost, in terms of cost? And then um, from the daily briefings, I've also noticed that the number of men who are being infected with COVID-19 surpasses that of women. Is there an explanation for this discrepancy? Okay, I will leave the gender explanation to the authority who knows it, because um, um, I don't know. But um, on the issue of the quarantine, we have made it very clear that uh, you are quarantined at your own cost. We, as a government, are going to help, and we have committed ourselves to helping, because we must, and we are also a responsible government. And we have said that we will do that, but perhaps that will be done more on a case-to-case -case basis. Some people can afford it. Some people can quarantine themselves in very expensive hotels. Others can't. So for us, it is to take care of the least able.
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the question of agenda, if you look at statistics starting from China, where the problem began to Italy, Spain, United States of America, Germany, all over. Apparently, this virus has a predilection for men compared to women. Even if you look at the number of people in our quarantine facilities, uh, it is more men, 57%, and 43% female. I just want again to emphasize what Waziri has said in terms of this extended mandatory quarantine. If you don't behave, then you'll suffer the consequences. We are making good progress, but we have not turned the corner yet. If we continue the measures that we put into place, we are confident that our numbers will be manageable. In terms of the age distribution, again, I wanted to emphasize our youngest case has been two years, and the oldest is 71 years. So as, as much as you want to ensure that the personal hygiene for adults, please don't forget about the children. Ensure that they also wash their hands. Ensure that they use the sanitizers. Limit their play with their friends outside as much as possible. So far, our case fatality rate is about 3% which shows that we are making some progress. If you compare to what is happening like in Italy, Spain, and the United States of America, where in the past 24 hours you have had more than 1,400 deaths, it means that if we take these measures that we preach each and every day and put them into practice, then we can be able to overcome this challenge. And my appeal to Kenyans is that tough times lie ahead, let us not lower our guard. Together, if we work like we are doing, we shall overcome. Thank you.